Hi, this is Jeff from the Ozark Mountains. That's in Missouri, in the USA. A few months ago, I fixed up this Casio VX4 and it had a missing port cover here. Luckily, one of the VX4s I bought had it. This one was missing, so I was able to measure the existing one and 3D print a new one. And somebody asked in a video comment how you go about modeling a part like this so you can print it. Well, as it turns out, this Tandy PC4, I recently did a video on fixing up, is missing the port cover here, but it is a different size than the VX4. Luckily, Casio, who also made this Tandy PC6, used the same expansion port for years. So it is the same as on the PC6, so I have one to measure up. So I thought this would be a good time to do a video on how you would go about modeling a simple part like this so you could 3D print a replacement. Let's get started. Thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. They do circuit boards of all sizes, small circuit boards, medium circuit boards. They can even assemble them for you. So head on over to PCBWay and get your free instant quote. Now they're offering an upgrade from TG130 to TG150 temperature rating for free. It really helps out having the original part that you wish to reproduce so you can measure it up and you don't have to guess or look at pictures. Let's first start out by talking about the measurement tools that we'll need to do something like this. Probably the most versatile measuring tool uh, that you'll find is a simple set of calipers. Now there's the old fashioned veneer calipers, the fancy modern digital calipers. But my favorite are simple dial calipers because uh, they always just work, the batteries don't run out, and there's very little to go wrong. Now these I bought years ago for about $12 on sale. Uh, that's only about a four inch set, which is, you know, 100 millimeters. It's not a top name brand, but they're good quality. Another very helpful measurement tool is a simple scale or ruler. This one is both in metric and inch units. And, you know, use whatever tool you have. This is, we'll measure both sets of units. This is in inches, but, you know, we can get to one from the other. It's not that difficult. So how do we go about modeling something like this? Well, since this is small, we can probably get by with just using the calipers. And if we have a look at it here, it is really just a rectangle with a kind of open wall on top of it and a couple vertical tabs here. So this is a pretty simple part. And I always like start making a sketch on paper. It's kind of old fashioned, but it works good. You always have something to refer to then when you're trying to model it, model it on the computer. So the first thing we'll do here is measure the length of this part. We'll start with a big rectangular area here. This is kind of hard to hold on. Get it on camera at the same time. There we go. Well, this is 1.67 inches and I'll use inches for now since that's what my caliper is in and then we'll convert that to metric later. So I am going to draw a representative rectangle here. This is not to scale. And we'll mark that as 1.670 inches. And its width is 0.24 inches. And we'll need to know the thickness. So we'll start out here. My lines aren't too straight here, are they? That's okay. 
we can live with it. We'll make a simple representative drawing of this, again, not to scale. And then we have our tabs sticking up here, something like this. That's close enough. So I want to make sure that we're just measuring the, the bottom part here. That is, make sure I'm on the right spot. About 048, 047. Sometimes there's flashing and stuff you can measure on these. I'll call that. 0.048 inches and we need to measure the height of this little wall section right here you can use the tail end of the caliper like this you poke it down in there and go like that then take the reading now let me see here so I'm measuring about 28 thousandths there another way to do it is just to measure the total thickness, that uh, is you know, 75 thousandths. So a lot of times that's easier and it's a little more accurate. And we just need to subtract uh, one from the other to get the thickness of this part up here. And I'll do the same thing for the height of the hooks or the tabs. That is. 0.329 on that side. Zero point three two nine. The base of this hook is about the same as the wall thickness, I think. Yeah, about a millimeter, about forty thousandths. That's fine. If I've done kind of a sloppy job on my initial sketch, I might redo it like I did here and then I can look at the part and make sure I've got all the detail. For instance, I missed the first time the taper uh, that you can see from the end view. So the tabs kind of go to a point. And um, I also added a little more detail, which you can see here at the bottom, as to the shape at the end of the tab. It should be noted that the tabs are about a millimeter further out at the top than at the bottom, meaning they're kind of splayed out. When modeling a part like this, I would start out with the rectangular base and then add the wall on top of that. That gives us a good foundation and some nice planar surfaces to work from. Then I would add a simple rectangular block to either end to represent the entire profile of the tab, that is the extent of the tabs in every direction, and then come back and add the shape to the tabs. To shape the tabs, I think I would start from the end view and get that kind of pyramidal shape and cut that through both tabs and then turn around to kind of the side view and get the outward pitch to the tabs and kind of take that chunk out of the outside edge where the hook is. We can then use the fillet and chamfer tools in the modeling software to get the rest of the tab shape and give us a lot of control at the same time and make it easier to adjust. I'm using Autodesk Fusion 360 here to create the 3D model. You might have a program you're more familiar with. They all work in similar ways. So the first thing we'll do is create a sketch. And you can think of sketch as kind of what we did by hand. You know, we're not trying to say take a line exactly from this point to exactly this point in space, but in a, you know, like for uh, drawing the base of our little cover here, we just sketch out a rectangle and then we say, okay, that needs to be 42.4 millimeters wide. 
and 6.1 millimeters in that direction. So we just had to draw the rough shape and then add the dimensions to make it perfect. So the sketch in this 3D modeling environment is kind of similar to what we do by hand. And we'll finish our sketch. And now we need to take it from a two-dimensional drawing to three-dimensional. And we do that by using the extrude tool. And it's already selected that for us since it's the only thing there. And the thickness of the base is 1.2 millimeters. Now we have our base already modeled and it was that easy. Now, one of the most difficult things when you're creating a 3D model like this is deciding what to parameterize and what to not. And this is where I often struggle and I'll get part of the way through a model and think, oh, I should have created a parameter for that. And what that means is there's kind of a spreadsheet where you can enter the name and value of a parameter and then reference that in your sketches rather than typing in a number. That way, if you need to change that particular parameter, you can adjust it in that spreadsheet and your whole model adapts to that. It makes it a lot faster. You can reference one thing to another and it allows you to adjust your model a lot easier. You may have noticed that on my second drawing, I had some numbers and names written down there. So I'm going to go to change parameters here. I'm going to add a few user parameters that describe the base in that little wall that sits on top of the base. And we can actually go back in and add our new parameters in place of fixed numbers. And for the thickness that we extruded it, we would add that in the extrusion feature. So instead of saying 1.2 millimeters here, we just say, oops, base thickness. It's that easy. Now, uh, adding the wall to the top of this will be very similar. I'm going to create a sketch right on top of there. And we'll start with another rectangle. This one is going to be wall width by wall height. And now we need to center the wall inside of the base rectangle. Depending on what you're doing, it may or may not be centered. Uh, there are built-in tools and many 3D modeling programs to center things. I'll show you a little different way which uh, helps out if you want to center it but offset it a little bit you know, from the center position, that type of thing. So we'll add a dimension and we'll go from the wall exterior to the base. And we're going to say we want the quantity of the base width minus the wall width. Oops, not equals. Minus the wall width divided by 2. There we go. And in the other direction, we'll do a similar thing. Now we want this to be a wall, not a block, so we could go ahead and extrude it up and draw the inner rectangle and extrude that back down, but that's a lot of effort. What we can do instead is use the offset tool. And I'm going to offset this one millimeter. It was just slightly uh, thinner than one millimeter on the original part, but the 3D printed parts aren't quite as strong as an injection molded, so. We'll just say one millimeter, that'll work. And we'll finish our sketch. And then we will click on that wall and we want to extrude that, the wall. There 
There we go. That is the start of our part. That wasn't too difficult. Now, the tabs. So we're going to create another sketch and we're going to go on top of the base again. Now the tabs are a little more interesting to draw and we'll start out with a simple rectangle and we want it to be the same vertical distance as seen in this picture as our wall. So we can kind of click on it and do that to get that set for us. And we want it to be two millimeters wide. Oops, let me bring that back down there and say two. And for the height, we wanted that to be the wall height. And this, we want to be two, not four. I like that. Okay. And remember the tabs were a millimeter further apart at the, the top than at the base, which means they need to be half a millimeter from the side of the base to the tab. So we'll set that dimension now. There we go. We just slid our rectangle over there. And I'm just going to draw the same thing on the other side. You can copy it. There's different things you can do depending on the package that you're using, but we'll try to keep it simple here. And you notice we've got stuff showing up on both sides of an existing feature, and that's fine. Okay, so now we're going to extrude that rough rectangular shape of our tabs. I'm going to get both of these. Okay. And the way I measured that is I measured from the bottom of the base to the top of the tab. And that came out to 8.4 millimeters, but we need to account for the, the thickness of the base in there because that was in that measurement. So if we do the full measurement, 8.4 minus base thickness that should get us the correct tab height oops and I did that wrong set that to cut rather than join there we go we didn't want to subtract material we want to add it so now we see if we look at the profile like that we have something that's kind of resembling our cover I'm going to go ahead and save this at this point now it'll be easiest at this point if we get our tapered profile in here. Okay, and our taper, we can do like this. We can draw right on the side of that. I need to find a way to turn that automatic repositioning off. And I'll just use a circle here as a measurement tool. This is kind of like old school mechanical drafting type of thing. And we can also do a project a surface with this face. I'm going to project these curves. This is the wall that's in there. We're kind of like seeing through this face to the position of the wall. And we'll draw a line that goes from here to there. And we'll go from here to there. I drew past it on purpose. So if we do that accidentally or on purpose, then we can use the trim tool to do that. Now we have a triangular place that represents what we want to get rid of and we can do the same thing on the other side. Lots of different ways you could draw something like this. Sometimes I tend to do things in the way I learned doing it with pencil and paper. We can finish the sketch and we'll get kind of a 3D view here. And again we'll say extrude. I'll choose these triangular parts here and we'll just say minus five for now and then we'll tell it to do all and see just that easy we got our side view taper on both ends at the same time and it starts 
at the top of the wall. Now we need to get our funny shape here on our tabs. This is probably the most intricate part of the whole thing. So I am going to create a new sketch and I'm going to click on the side of the wall so that'll be the plane that we're drawing on. But we're actually going to extrude it through this whole uh, in view of the tab here. And remember that this tab is hanging out half a millimeter past uh, where the, the bottom of it is. So one thing I'll do here is I'll create, this is just a line to use as a, as a measured space. Let me go from this side of the tab to here and that should be 0.5 millimeters. That gives us our place to snap to for, for this. Kind of zoom in here so we can see it and make sure we get snap to it. Okay, that's all that line was for. So we could get the right angle there. And then we need to cut a rectangular section out of here. That is 3 point, oops, no. In this dimension, it is 0 0.5 millimeters, and in this dimension is 3.9 millimeters. So we can cut out this whole rectangular section, but we need to finish off our triangle here, don't we? There we go. Okay, and I'll draw the same thing on the other side, and we'll come back and extrude that out. We've got our features drawn there, and we'll do an extrude cut again. I want that piece and this whole piece and that piece. And this whole piece will say minus five. That'll just get us going the right direction and then say all. Okay, that gives us a tab of roughly the right shape. Which is kind of a good place to go ahead and save again. There we go. Now we need to round off this corner and add a little taper here, which will not only aid it at releasing, be similar to the original, but it'll print better because this area won't be totally unsupported. So we'll use the fillet tool. We'll click there and there. Now normally I kind of play this by ear to get looking as close to the original as possible. Um, and if you have a set of like machinist radius gauges, you can actually measure radiuses and try to match it exactly. It's not that important on this. So if we try, let's say, uh, 0.5 millimeters, that's not quite enough. If we go 1.5, that's probably a little too much. I don't think we want it pointy on the inside. So maybe one millimeter. Maybe just slightly less than that. It's a 0.9 millimeter radius. That's probably pretty good. Okay. Now I've closed the fillet tool down, but I can reopen it. And I can change that dimension or I can add other fillets. So what I'm going to do here is select this and this. We're just going to give them, say, a quarter millimeter radius. There we go. Okay. Now we want to do a chamfer here, but we're going to do, do it separately on each side because um, we want a two dimension chamfer and we're going from different ways, if that makes sense. So if we go up here and select the chamfer tool and we select that right there, we tell it we want it two distance chamfer. It's 0.5 millimeters across. 
but I think we want we don't want it that kind of a sharp of an angle. Never sure which one of these to change. There we go, point 0.2. So it's not as much of an angle there. So 0 0.5 by 0 0.2. That looks good. Okay, and I'm going to use the same object here to do the one on the other side as well. Okay, now that resembles our original piece. It's actually a little bit thicker than the original, but the plastic printed this way isn't as strong. That uh, will print it with the base on the bed of the printer, so the layer lines will go horizontally like this, and it won't be quite as strong. This should be pretty good. Now, the one last thing we might do is put a little chamfer on the edges of the base here. That'll uh, make them seem a little closer to the original. They won't feel quite so sharp against the hand. So if we just select all four sides, and I'll be printing these with a 0.2 millimeter layer height. So I think if we set that at 0.2 millimeter, that'll give us one layer missing from that outside edge, which should be just enough. There we go. All right. So, and we'll probably need to, you know, make a few tweaks and try printing it a few times to get this just right. I'm going to save a mesh of that part as an STL with high resolution. And we're going to call this port cover HB. Okay. Now we have an STL of that. We can go into our slicing software, slice it, and then print it out. So here we've got our model brought into IdeaMaker, which is the slicing software that I use. And everything looks fine. It's sitting right on the base. There's nothing really I need to adjust. It's a fairly simple part. I'm going to go here to slicing. I'm using a 0.2 millimeter layer height, two and a half shells. Uh, for a small part like this, I'm going to use an 85% infill, which in reality is going to be almost 100% infill, but it comes out a little nicer looking than if you do 100%. Sometimes with 100%, you can get funny things happening that you have to work around. And we're just going to put a skirt around the part uh, I'm going to extrude with the left extruder at 215C, which works good for this uh, filament I'm using. I'm going to use a beige colored filament for this so it'll show up on camera. And if it works, then we'll print one out of black so it matches the original. So I'll click slice here. We'll get a preview of that. And that looks pretty good. You can see it's kind of exaggerating the one lone uh, path on top of the part here. And we've got this skirt around here, which is fine. That should work out just fine. I am going to go ahead and upload that to my printer. I'll close the preview and just save that file for the future. Now let's go over and see it print. The first few prints I did in a beige filament that I already had loaded and it shows up better on the camera than black does. Now this is a bit of an iterative process. You have to print it and check to see how it fits and make some tweaks in the model and slice it again and print it again. And I probably printed say four or five pieces total to get it just right. Well, how did we wind up with our little 3D printed part? Well, pretty good. Uh, the first one fit. It's a little floppy loose. Uh, the second one was a little tight. So if we pop it in here, you can see it kind of bows up like that. So I switched the black filament, that's the same as that one. And I did a uh, 
couple of versions with this spacing in here, this gap in the hook, a little different. It was originally at 3.9 millimeters. Um, I went up to 5 millimeters, which was worse. And I tried one at 4.8 and 4.6, and that was these two. They are so close. This one's 4.8. I cut the corner off so I could tell. But these behave about the same. I can't tell the difference between them. When they're in there, they pop in there. They work really good. They're not loose. And they also fit the PC6 over here. Works real good, just like the original in there, too. So, say that's a success. So, I will put the files for these covers on Thingiverse. So, I'll put the link in the description down below. So, if you need one, you can print them. If you don't have a printer and you need one, just uh, send me a message. Let me know. I hope you found this video helpful. It turned out to be a lot longer than I thought it would be. And I did a, a quick poll on Twitter and everyone said, yeah, go for a longer length with more of an explanation. So that's what I did. Now we've got a functional port cover for our little PC4. And if you look in the description down below, there's a link to Thingiverse where these files are. So you can modify them or check them out or print your own cover. And, you know, hopefully this gives you some ideas, some pointers of how to go about creating a similar part yourself. Thanks to everyone for watching and for those who help support the Hate Burt channel through Patreon and other means. It's greatly appreciated. Uh, any questions or comments? Well, you know what to do. Leave them in that comment section down there below. I would love to hear from you. And until next time.